Oh, no, we're, we're not. Uh, yes, we are. Yeah, you're, you're on, on Marvin. What was that? Good morning. good morning. It's good to see you. Good to be seen. I don't recognize you because you're all wearing masks. <laughs> and we do want to we do want to say uh, remember that that uh, there are folks here that are are uh, sensitive and are taking care of somebody with with uh, compromised immune system. So it is important for us to either do social distancing or physical distancing or wear a mask. And some of our folks that are here are taking care of compromised, uh, folks with compromised immune systems, and so we want to honor their concerns. Last Sunday, there were flowers on the, on the altar that I didn't uh, explain or mention. And uh, Elton and Donna Whedon were celebrating their 64th wedding anniversary. So we want to honor that. Well done. Well done. And uh, there are flowers here on the altar celebrating Bev and Jim Mayring's 55th anniversary. So congratulations and another well done. Now over here on the uh, on the table, it's this is information from Samaritan's Purse. And uh, we do the we do the Christmas boxes. And they're doing a little different this year. If you go over to the table, rather than signing up, you can take one of these sheets home with you, and you can do the entire uh, donation online. And I don't, I don't know. Uh, for your convenience, the best way is to build your shoe box online, so you don't even have to go to the store. You can build it right there online. And uh, we appreciate that helping us to do it in an efficient way. Now, does everybody have communion elements? Did you get those when you came in? You, and you're going to need bulletins to sing off of. We don't have any screens here. The folks getting the recording, and by the way, hello to all of you who are joining us by, uh, by through the recording, and that will be online in about two hours. It takes a couple of hours for us to upload it to YouTube and for them to process it and have it be available to people to watch. And, and we've alerted everybody uh, via email, they know that's, that that's the case. There are offering buckets on the tables as you leave, and uh, those are the great buckets with a little slot in the, in the top, and if you didn't come prepared, just drop your wallet in there. <laughs> we'll take care of it. I tell you, uh, we just all need to thank the Lord, and, and I need to thank all of you and all of those that are watching the recording about how good we have done as a church during this COVID-19 crisis. It's been amazing. We have done really, really well financially in, in maintaining our, our uh, budget. And so you all are, are to be thanked and praised for doing that. Susie has a little bit of information that she wants to share with you about uh, Beans. Now she's not getting personal. She just has a little information that, uh, and it's not about Wanda. So Wanda, you can relax. Believe it or not, it's the first of November, and so this will be our third annual year for collecting dried beans, peas, split peas, lentils, uh, whatever, for the food uh, bank. And so I'm just giving you a fair warning. You'll have three Sundays now, starting next week, to bring it either to church or right. I'm going to put a box and, on our front and step and uh, front little front the porch there, and I'll have it marked, and so you can drop beans off at our house too. And I'll have all of that information with our address um, in the bulletin for next week. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Yeah, that's a great thing to do, isn't it? Now, is, can everybody hear? Can you guys hear out there? Anybody having trouble hearing? We'll, we'll move you forward. 
And uh, we're just glad that you're here. And Betty's going to come. And uh, you know, she's always changing things to the last minute. Where are you, Betty? Ah, we, we hate to ask, but the, the white car behind me is, is messing up the color adjustment for the camera because it's our backdrop. And, and we apologize for that. Would Thank you very much. I'm sorry. Uh, and by the way, that's a very nice car. I like that a lot. <laughs> that for sale. Betty, come and get us started in music. And again, Betty's changed things up a little bit because that's the kind of person she is. And uh, the, you know, you're not going to see the words. The words are in your bulletin, but the live streaming or the recorded uh, video, they'll have, they'll have uh, the words on their screen. You want to put this in here or you want to hold it? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, talk about changing things up. <clears throat> your order of service in the front of your bulletin, you can just forget that. Pastor Jim at 4 o'clock this morning changed it all. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Just a minute ago, we had a whole bunch of good songs playing, and one of them was, Since Jesus Came Into My Heart, and you don't have the words, but... Let's sing it. It was such a good song, and it was so upbeat, and uh, it was Steve Sorensen that said, let's do this. So I said, okay, let's do it. It's you ready? Right, Tom, you ready? I can't see it. It's very, it's being washed out. Maybe? Yeah. It's coming. Yeah, you can't see it. Okay, clap your hands, whatever. the three songs that we're going to sing this morning. And the first one is There's Power in the Blood. So let's start out with that one. Can you find the words? Does anybody need a bulletin? Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power in the 
to Calvary's tide. There's wonder, no power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lord. Too bright. Thank you, Betty. That's great singing, great songs. Amen? Amen. We are focusing this this morning on, on uh, the election and as far as prayer goes and, and uh, I'm going to fix this so that, and communion, remembering the Lord's death till he comes. And so I'm changing this, have changed the service up a little bit. So I'm going to speak a, a few minutes about uh Jesus Christ being the propitiation for our salvation, and we'll explain that. And then we're going to celebrate communion, and uh, and then after we celebrate communion, we'll sing together to doxology. <laughs> Thank you, because I saw some people nodding off, and so that's that's good. And then there are people scattered around. If they see somebody nodding off, they're going to honk. So everybody's got to stay with us. <laughs> and uh, after the singing the doxology, then uh, we're going to have Pastor Mac and Pastor Steve come and lead us in prayer for the election, for our country. And uh, our biggest prayer is that the person that God wants to be in the White House is going to be in the White House. That's our fervent prayer. And that, that we will be examples to, as, as to how to live your life with people you disagree with without being nasty about it. And uh, so we need to we need to show the way there because it seems like our country has lost the ability to do that. So I want to take a few minutes, and uh, you don't have the the passage in the in your bulletin, I don't think anyway. And uh, so I'm going to read to you just just three verses from Romans chapter three. We've been moving through Romans, and uh, so I want to read these three verses. We've sort of been coming to this place in chapter 1 and chapter 2. And then in chapter 3, we, we, this is the most, of all people on the earth that should have something to sing about, we do. Amen. We have something to sing about. And it's the, the reality that we have been reconciled to our Father in heaven, to our Creator, through the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. And this is what Romans chapter 3, beginning in verse 23, says. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift, as a gift. You cannot earn it. You cannot deserve it. It is a gift. Through, this, this is the means of our, of our gift, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation. What does that mean? We'll explain that in a moment. 
as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance he had passed over former sins. I'm going to stop reading there because I'm going to divide my message up into two parts. And right now I'm just going to focus on the reality that Jesus Christ is our propitiation. Now that passage starts out, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift. The glory of God is the standard of righteousness. Not our behavior, not anyone's behavior here on the earth. The glory of God is the standard of righteousness by which God is going to judge mankind if, if mankind desires to be judged and not coming to, to Jesus Christ. And God has gone to great lengths. And he started out in the garden after Adam and Eve sinned. He killed animals for the first time in the garden and, and so that they could have clothing made out of the skins of animals. And uh, then he called Abraham out of the land of Ur and, uh, and, uh, and his descendants. And then the people of Israel grew into a large nation in, this, in the country of Egypt. But also in Egypt they were made slaves. And so God sent Moses to lead them out of that uh, captivity, uh, out of that slavery. And, uh, and then through Moses God gave the law. And, uh, and then he gave the, the nation of Israel the prophets. And they still weren't getting God's message of righteousness and salvation. And so he sent them into captivity. And he brought them out of captivity. He restored them. And, uh, and prepared Israel for the coming of the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. God has gone to such great lengths to say, I am the only one that can take care of this sin problem. You can't take care of it. Excuse me. I don't really need them, but I might feel lonesome. You can't take care of it, so I'm going to take care of it. You can't earn it, so I'm going to earn it for you. Uh, and it's, it's by grace and it's a gift. And the way that God did that is that he sent Christ to be the propitiation by his blood. What does propitiation mean? If, uh, if two of you were at odds with each other, and you've been friends for a long time, but one or the other did something, and, and you, were, you no longer would talk to each other. You had your backs turned to each other. And then one or the other decided that, you know, I, I don't want this to be. And, and maybe a third party saw this breakdown of friendship. And so this third party baked a friendship cake and, and got the two friends together and, and uh, shared this friendship cake and reminded them that, that they had a lot more in common and the argument was, was futile and the relationship was restored. It wasn't just that, that the that something the friendship cake paid for the wrongdoing of one or both is that there was an act of kindness that not only restored the possibility of a relationship but changed enmity into uh, uh, well mollified the enmity and that's what the blood of Jesus did with Jesus Christ is that God's wrath demanded my death and your death and the death of everyone who had sinned who had fallen short of the righteousness of God not short of any human standard but short of the righteousness of God and God knew we couldn't do anything about that so he sent Jesus and there on the cross all alone the Lord Jesus Christ shed his blood to pay the ransom for our sins so that God's wrath would be mollified, that, that God would say, oh, I'm satisfied. And that's really a word you can use instead of propitiation, is that God looked at the suffering of Jesus on the cross and his righteousness was satisfied. Not only was his righteousness satisfied, but his wrath toward us was satisfied and taken care of so that now God could wrap his arms around us and draw us to himself through the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. So when we come to this communion table, that's what we're trying to remember. And this provides us humility, and I, I can't think of a better way during this election cycle to just stop and say, not only the people that I'm voting against, but me, myself. I'm, my issues have been, have been taken care of. 
God's enmity toward me has been mollified. It's been taken care of. It's been lessened. And, and it's all because of the blood of Jesus on the cross, not because I've done anything special or, or lived a good life. It's the fact that Jesus Christ has done all the work for me and for you. And what we need to do is step forward and claim the gift. Now imagine if Christmas came around as you were, a, you were a, a young kid growing up and there was a present under the tree and it looked really, really good, but you decided, you know what, I, I'm not going to unwrap that. I just don't want to. <laughs> well, it's really a neat gift. Yeah, I'm tired of opening presents. I'm just not going to. Well, that wouldn't happen, would it? <laughs> but it happens every day because God is offering the gift of salvation to all who believe. And there are many people who turn away from that gift and say, no, I don't, I'm not going to unwrap that gift. I know it's wonderful, but I choose not to unwrap it. Well, what we're doing with this communion cup is that we're telling God and society and each other that that's not our case. We believe this. We believe that when Jesus gave this, the Lord's Supper in that upper room before he went to the cross, we believe that that is truth. And we believe that his work on the cross did take care of God's wrath for our sins. And we're saying to ourselves, to our neighbors, to society and to God that we believe. We believe. We're not coming to him into his presence with good works. We're not coming to him with money. We're not coming to him with the right denominational adherence. We are coming to him with empty hands. And all we're relying on is what he did on the cross for us. So if you'll take that, uh, that communion cup that you have there, And uh, we're going to do this together, and, and we're doing it standing against all the hatred and the conflict in our country. And we're saying we're not going to go there. We're, we're not going to go that way. We're going to trust God that God's working out his will on the earth. And, and I've said this before, and I just want to remind you that when Jesus was on the earth, uh, just out of the top of my head, I can't remember anything he ever said against the Roman government. In fact, he told Pilate, you have no authority over me that God hasn't given you. And, and we need to plant our feet on that. That what God is working out is not on behalf of the United States of America. He's working it out on behalf of his plan for the world. And we don't know what's around the corner in the world, but God does. So we, we dare not hang our heads or panic or... or or get lost in anger toward the other side. We believe that God is working out his will for the earth. And if that means that we're going to be uncomfortable for, uncomfortable for a while, well, then we're going to be uncomfortable. And if God gives us the privilege of suffering for the sake of Christ, then that is a privilege and an honor. And so we're telling Jesus today, as we celebrate this, this uh, Lord's table, and you can peel back that very top cellophane, to get that delicious disc of bread. The Lord Jesus in the upper room, he took that bread and he, he, he broke it, he tore it. And he, did, he gave it to his, his disciples and he said, I want you to eat this because this is symbolic of my body, my body, which is given for you. And in remembrance of that gift, we eat together. Now we lift up the next stage of that to reveal the fruit of the vine. And likewise, Jesus, very solemnly, remember he'd already washed the feet of his disciples, showing true servanthood and humility. And now he picks up a cup and he drinks from it and he passes it to his disciples and he said, you need to eat this and you need to drink this. You need to drink from this cup because this is symbolic of my blood, my life, which I have poured out for you. And we do this together, saying to, to the Father in heaven and Lord Jesus to you and to everyone around us that we believe, Lord Jesus, that you gave your life, you shed your blood for us as we drink together. Amen. Thank you.
for participating with us in this Lord's table. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for all that you've done for us. And Betty's going to come, and she's going to lead us in a short song, the doxology. It's just a, it's just a, a, a short chorus of praise, praising God for who he is, from whom all blessings flow. And, uh, and then after Betty leads us in the doxology, we're going to ask Pastor Mac and Pastor Steve to come forward and lead us in prayer. Morning. We live in probably the most exciting time that there's been, at least in the history of America. Our world is filled with fear, with chaos, with anarchy, with all kinds of things that do bring us a tremendous amount of fear. And I know across this park, we're scared to death of uh, disease, we're scared to death of breathing on each other, and people are hiding. Each other. But I want to tell you this, that no matter what we think, God is still in what control. What needs to happen? The generator quit. God is in control. No, the generator. Do you believe that? Yes. 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 Say that with me. God is in control. God, God is, is in control. control. No, some of you didn't have any coffee. God is in control. God is in control. I really believe that, and if we don't believe that, then we're meeting here for no reason. What excitement is going on inside of Israel? The Middle East is doing wonderful things, Father, and we read the book, Father, we read it from cover to cover, and we see that this is exciting, exciting times, that at least for a short time there's peace in the Middle East, and we praise you for that, Father, because we're told to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, and we do that indeed, and we thank you in advance for the wonderful things that you're accomplishing, in Jesus' holy name, amen, amen. and amen. Thank you, God, for sending Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you came. Holy Spirit, won't you teach us more about that lovely name? And Father, we pray for a stoppage, a blockage, a healing of the coronavirus that is sweeping the world and sweeping our nation. Father, we pray that you, by the quickening power of your love and of the Holy Spirit, would block that thing. And God, even that it would, it would astound and amaze the doctors that all of a sudden this has stopped. Lord, we pray that you would just bring healing to those who have been affected, bring healing to those who have suffered through it, and God, bring comfort to those who've lost a loved one because of it. And Lord, we just pray you would just have your way. Lord, we pray for Happy Trails Resort. God, we pray you would continue to protect the resort. Give the re resort board wisdom, understanding. Father, might they react with integrity and purpose. God, we just thank you for that. And Lord, we give you praise for who you are for what you are doing and the way you touch and touch lives. Lord, we just thank you for it and may you, almighty God, might your blessing rest upon each one of us in your name. Amen.
Don't you love it when things go wrong? <laughs> uh, it's exciting to me. It means we're doing the right thing. And, uh, and the enemy doesn't like it. Vasco's going to come, and Vasco, you take your place right there, and right in front of the altar. Unless you're... Oh, you're going to be right there? Super. Very good. Vasco's going to sing for us and uh, lead us in, in worshiping the Lord through his gift. Vasco. Thank you. Right behind the cross, it's going to give me power. I could not go on without him, I know this world would overwhelm my soul, and I could not see the right way to go. When temptation over me rose, he whispers sweet peace to me. He whispers sweet peace to me. When I am cast down and troubled in my soul, he whispers sweet peace to me. He speaks in a still small voice untold it's a voice that dispelled all of my tears and when I am cast down and troubled in my soul that steals small voice you, Vasco. Praise the Lord for that message and song. Just uh, to close our time together before we, we sing our closing hymn, I want to, to call our attention to one phrase uh, in, in this passage in Romans that I, I didn't read, and I didn't read it on purpose, and it says this, after saying that, that Jesus Christ is our propitiation by his blood, this was to show God's righteousness. And that word show means to publicly display. So God's righteousness could be publicly displayed because in his divine forbearance he had passed over, sort of tolerated, former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time. Now mark this. So that he might be just and the justifier 
of the one who has faith in Jesus. There is no easy salvation, and our salvation was not free. It's a gift. It was not free. Jesus paid uh, the, the absolute total price in his blood, sacrificing his life for you and for me to demonstrate to the world God's righteousness. You see, God had to strike a balance. On one hand, he, need to be he needed to be proven completely just, completely righteous, one who would never blink at sin, never sweep it under the carpet. It was there, it had to be taken care of. God had to prove himself completely righteous, completely just. On the other side, God needed to demonstrate that he was the justifier. His mercy was perfect. That not only was he perfectly just and perfectly righteous, he was also perfectly merciful and filled with love for his creation. So both those things are true. God's righteousness and God's mercy. And he showed the world his righteousness and his mercy through the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. And that's why we should all talk, always talk about what Christ did for us. We will never plumb the depths of all that God has done for us on the cross. It, it, is, it is what we are about. We aren't about Democrats. We aren't about Republicans. We aren't about all these things. Primarily, we're about Jesus Christ and proclaiming his death and resurrection as the only solution for the sins of mankind. And that's our task. Our task is to show that gospel to others, to let them know that God is a completely just God. He's not like mankind. He doesn't wink at sin. He's got one standard. But he also moved on our behalf and paid the price so that he could make our salvation a gift, not a free gift. It was purchased. But we can't earn it. We can't pay money for it. We can't do good things for it. We must receive it. And then God begins to change our lives and move us toward the image of Christ during the span of our lifetime, however that might be. I can't think of a better way to close our time together than having Betty come up and, and lead us in singing at Calvary. And it is only at Calvary that we can celebrate what God has done for us at Calvary. And then after we sing this wonderful, wonderful hymn, we'll, we'll uh, close in prayer. And uh, then we'll sing our, our closing. Betty will lead us in our closing chorus, because I always forget the words. No! <laughs>
Thank you, Betty. <clears throat> Years ago, I was speaking in a little church outside Phnom Penh, Cambodia, and uh, <laughs> after moving to the service, and, and I was exiting, going to the doors, and I realized that in, at that time in Cambodia, only one quarter of one percent of the population uh, were Christian. And I was there giving a workshop for a, for a few weeks to pastors and lay leaders. And, and then on Sundays, I would speak at different churches out in the surrounding area. I don't really know where, what village it was that I was at, but as I walked to the front doors and opened them, they built their church purposely to, you open the church and there was a large religious idol a Buddhist temple that had been built, uh, ancient that was there, and they purposely built their church so that when we when they exited, they that's what they said was their mission field. They they were not they were not ashamed of the gospel and they were not afraid. They knew they were going to be persecuted. They knew that it was going to be difficult for them, but they moved forward. May we have that same mindset. May we not bother us about external circumstances. God's going to see us through. Can we pray together? Father, we thank you for your goodness to us. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you were willing to cooperate with the Father and the Father's plan to come to this earth. And on this earth, you taught us what the Father gave you to teach, and you did what the Father gave you to do, and you didn't fix all the problems in the world. You didn't, uh, you didn't kick that hobnailed Roman boot off the throat of Israel. You didn't heal every disease. You didn't solve every problem. You came just to do what the Father gave you to do. And Father, we know that you're working out your plan for us. You're working out your plan for the United States of America and for the world. And we say, Lord Jesus, come quickly. We look forward to that day when every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And we pray that we will move through this election cycle with grace and kindness and that we will, we will uh, honor your will that's being carried out. We thank you for each person that's here. And I know, Lord, that many came with ills and, and aches and pains, and I just thank you for each person that sacrificed to get up this morning and come to our service. We pray for the election yet to come. We pray that, that votes will be cast and they'll be honestly counted and uh, that the person of your choosing would be in the White House. We love you, Father. We love you, Lord Jesus. We pray that you'll work your will out for each one of our lives. We praise your name. And it's in the name of your son, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Betty retreated. All right. You probably remember more words than I do. <laughs> I'll stand here with you. Maybe what you forget, I'll remember. What I forget, you can remember. Okay. Um, if it's possible and if you feel like it, let's stand up where we can just raise our hands up at the end when we get done. May God's blessing surround you each day as we trust Him and walk in His way. May His presence within God and keep you from sin. Go in peace, go in joy, go in love. Go in peace, go in joy, go in love. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for being here today. Have a blessed day. Don't forget the offering buckets as you go out. And uh, again, thank you for being here. One more thing, if there's any choir people here that want their books, I've got them in my trunk.